Welcome. I'm in Manhattan, a Muncie word from the Lenny Lenape people. And I want to acknowledge them for their stewardship of this island in Turtle Island before the settlers came and committed genocide, actually moving them to Wisconsin, Oklahoma, and to Brantford, Ontario, near global Toronto, to protect the British royalists in Canada from the revolutionaries in America, I just learned. Manhattan, the word, is from the words to gather wood for bows. So that that is actually what may happen at Central Park summer stage when we have the trees. Bows and arrows of culture, music, performance arts, and anti-oppression anti lyrics and lyric translations. They worked with us to show lyric translations this year on their beautiful big screen and on two smaller slot side screens, thanks to a CEC grant, Canadian Heritage, Canadian Export Content Initiative, that I'd like any and all from presenters here at festivals, Global Toronto folks, to please consider, and we're happy to assist on that. We worked with Lido Pimienta, the Polaris Prize winner, with her beautiful graphics and profound words so the audience could read her Spanish lyrics in English in real time. Yesterday, uh, I took a break from some of the Global Toronto uh, amazing event to watch the eulogy of John Robert Lewis, one of my ancestors, our ancestors, and watch the three presidents eulogize him. He was famous for challenging the status quo, for good trouble, and for uh, exhorting everyone to be better. The most moving part for me, actually, was the Winans uh, and everyone else in the Martin Luther King Church, Ebenezer Baptist in Georgia, singing after Obama's eulogy, We Shall Overcome through their masks. I want to thank Global Toronto, Small World Music, and all the networks, people, panelists, delegates, especially all the artists here. And thank the elder who started it off so powerfully. Thanks for all the voices here with uh, sometimes challenging conversations, challenging each other and challenging the status quo. Like I believe we've all been doing through our choices, our learning, our art, our music, our efforts, vocationally and avocationally. I am quite sure we'll all keep at it, like John Lewis, as long as we're alive. Do the right, do the next right thing, a friend of mine, Latch, sings, or George Clinton, free your mind and your ass will follow. So now, um, I wanted to move on to the lyric presentation from my colleague who wrote the presentation with um, more surprises to follow. So please stay with us and ask questions in the app. I'll be back at the end live. So pardon a couple of seconds of sharing screen technology. And hopefully this will work. Here we go. Um, Welcome and thank you for joining us. Sorry. My name is Najin Nadal. I am the Publisher Licensing Administrator at Lyric Fine. I've been working at Lyric Fine for four years, and prior to joining the publishing team, I was part of the content team where I added, edited, and translated lyrics in both English and Italian. And as I am a music lover, but also a little bit obsessed with words, stories, language, and translation, that was a really exciting experience for me. I've always felt that lyrics are really an essential part of what makes songs so special. I love hearing people's stories, how they share them through their songs, and then taking that knowledge and using it to reflect on aspects of my own life. I feel that often lyrics perfectly express uh, what we're thinking or 
how we're feeling in a given moment. So it seems only natural that we should highlight the value that lyrics hold and try to shed more light on how lyrics can help you earn money. Now, before working at Lyric Find, I never really gave much thought to the fact that lyrics could actually be monetized. And that's why I love what we do. We support songwriters and copyright holders. We help them share their stories, reach a broader audience, and expose them to additional sources of revenue. So please, sit back, follow along, and we hope that you find our talk both informative and enjoyable. Thanks, Laura. And now we'll go, oops, sorry. Now we'll go to full screen and go. And every day on the evening news, they seize your fear for free. And you so numb, you watch the cops choke out a man like me. And took my voice goes from the street to whisper, I can't breathe. And you sit there in the house on couch and watch it on TV. The most you get to twin grand called in a Let's talk lyrics. Lyrics talk. I'm going to read this quickly because of the disability panel or whatever it was called earlier. And I'm understanding that there might be some visually challenged people here. So lyrics talk. Lyrics capture and communicate the events, social and cultural discourse of a moment. The value of lyrics undeniably lies in part in their ability to reflect what has happened at a specific time, place, and to impart knowledge, perspective, and insight. If we stop and reflect on the fact that those prescient lyrics by Run the Jewels were recorded in the fall of 2019, the significance they assume today is even more powerful. The history of 400 and more years of oppression is tragically one of the main lyrical themes from the troubadours, artists, and songwriters of these centuries and other centuries, often banned or censored by the government, media, or other gatekeepers, like the indigenous people in Canada and elsewhere. History, the oldest surviving complete musical composition from anywhere in the world is the Sikolos Epitaph. The lyrics and melody of this ancient Greek work date back to either the first or second century AD and were found engraved on a tombstone as an epitaph in honor of the composer's wife. Albeit a brief song, the lyrics remind us of the shortness of life and inspire us to live, love, and thrive. History repeating, storytelling has been present across societies over all eras and all parts of the world. Stories use language to convey ideas. What makes stories so impactful is that they're engaging and relatable. Stories make us human. They bring us together, allowing us to feel linked in some way and create a sense of community. In a deeper way, lyrics add the meaning, the layer of meaning and memory to songs. They tell stories and describe experiences or moments that people identify with, either recalling a similar experience they have had or imagining it happening. Lyrics connect people and change lives. Sometimes they save lives. Lyrics count. From sheet music to album sleeve to digital streaming, Song lyrics have always been and continue to be an integral part of the music listening experience. In 2017, media connected, conducted a consumer survey and found that almost 90% of streaming music subscribers search for lyrics and 61% of streaming lyrics users consider them essential to the experience. With many millions of searches for lyrics per day, music fans are definitely fascinated by lyrics. Lyrics have generally been the number one search term across the internet globally since search has been counted. Number one. Hot topic, uh, whether lyrics carry more weight than the melody of a song has long been the subject of debate. Songs are where two languages, words and music, meet and are fused. In a sense, the two elements cannot be separated or their song would not exist. It is their synergy that makes the song. In most countries, lyrics are counted as 50% of the value of a publishing copyright in any song with lyrics. Lyrics are certainly a monomic device to know or sing the song. Studies show, in a recent study, researchers at McGill University found that sounds are processed simultaneously by two separate areas in the brain. The study shows that speech content is decoded on the left side of the brain while melodic content is decoded by the right side of your brain. Researchers yet to establish how the brain combines the two streams of information into a coherent listening experience. We perceive the song as one thing, a song, not two separate streams. So how much are lyrics actually worth? Essentially, our brain attributes equal value to both the lyrics and the melody of a song does not process one element before the other. Lyrics do matter and are just as important as music. For me, they matter more than the music.
for some musicians, they matter less than the music personal uh, balancing. Beyond their emotional and spiritual value, lyrics possess an additional monetary value as well. Lyrics data can be integrated into a variety of services for music discovery and monetization. There are royalties to be earned, royalties that can be generated each time lyrics are displayed. These royalties are calculated separately from the royalties generated with each, every, each and every song stream. There's alternative revenue streams, a shift in how music is being licensed, delivered, and monetized. That's what the web is about. That's what this conference is about. There's shifts to digital. Audio and video streaming have become our main forms of music entertainment. Lyrics are an integral part of the streaming experience. Tapping into alternative revenue streams has become fundamental for songwriters and all rights holders, especially now when you're staying home. This is how you can generate income. The lyric experience. While music consumption is becoming increasingly digital, the opportunity for rights holders to monetize their lyrics digitally is often overlooked. Songwriters and rights holders can earn lyric revenue and greatly in increase ancillary revenue by making their lyrics available for display on digital platforms, search and lyric websites, among other digital usages. Earn royalties. There's a uh, table on here where music ro royalties are cut, cut, cut into sound recording composition and, and there's a composition side and mechanical royalties for the sales, performance royalties for the performance, and lyric royalties, which is actually a relatively new phenomenon. Earn revenue every time someone views your lyrics. Is revenue earned by rights holders who music, whose music is on streaming platforms is determined mainly by the number of streams your works generate. Streaming lyrics while listening to song actually boosts the number of individual plays a song will generate and drives longer listens over the 30-second paid or unpaid streaming service, drives longer listens and sales of songs, and generates much more money for publishers and writers as well as labels and artists on the master side when a lyric is displayed. Streaming revenue, as JC wrote now, double your money and make a stack, but on average paid streaming tiers, publishing revenue per stream royalty doubles. Publishing revenue per stream royalty doubles when your lyrics are exhibited. On average, ad supported free tiers, publishing revenue per stream royalty quadruples when your lyrics are exhibited. Plus, there's much more ancillary income. Lyrics displayed online increases all music revenue. Let me repeat that. Lyrics displayed online increases all music revenue. Sinks, karaoke, concert tours, merchandising, mechanical, performance, interactive, neighboring, master royalties, every royalty stream rises. The more fans know the lyrics to your songs, the more the value of your songs and catalog rise and generate more revenue from every single music and related income source. Why? Because the lyrics have been communicated successfully, which is the purpose of songs and lyrics. That holds true for the translations as well, because they, the users need to know the meaning of the songs as well as the lyrics in a different language. Lyrics have told your story. They've touched somebody's heart, mind, or dancing shoes. Free your mind and your ass will follow. Or in a marketing sense, the lyrics have acquired a new customer. So are you maximizing the exposure, ex exhibition, and monetization of your works? We can help. Lyric find <laughs> who we are. Uh, the world's leader in ly legal lyric solutions. Our market-leading license catalog and reporting infrastructure powers digital platforms used by fans to enjoy music. Over the last decade, Lyric Find has created a lyric licensing and distribution infrastructure which launched a new multi-million dollar revenue stream for publishers and songwriters and empowers websites, music apps, and other platforms to legally display lyrics for a variety of uses, the most important of which is connecting to the fan. Uh, Google Search, Amazon Music were some of the logos displayed on the previous page. Pandora, Deezer. Lyric Find has the lar largest licensed lyrics catalog in the world. Lyric Find is trusted by over 70 mostly exclusive clients to provide current, accurate, and fully licensed lyrics. Lyric Find's ever growing business includes all the major music publishers, you can see the logos here, and, and many thousands of independent publishers representing over 55,000 music catalogs. Lyric Find connects new royalty, collects new, new royalties for songwriters and rights holders and benefits music fans who engage more easily than ever with lyrics that inspire them. Before Lyric Find, all lyrics online were unauthorized and illegal. Starting in 20, 2004, Lyric Find helped create the legal online market for lyrics by working closely with publishers, songwriters, and online platforms. 
that's my job still on the publishers and songwriters side and uh, we're working on it with uh, companies all around the world. Anti-piracy. Lyricline's been a main driver be behind creating a legal and global lyric infrastructure for all platforms. Lyricline worked closely with the National Music Publishers Association M and MPA in the US and works closely, gosh, John's calling me. Wow. <laughs> ah, I hope everything is working here. Well, uh, Am I not sharing this screen? What is going on? Damn. All right. Sorry, guys. For some reason, this screen wasn't shared. You can hear my voice, but not see the screen. So sorry, everybody. I have to go back to share screen. Now I'm sharing the screen. Damn. Where were we? All right. So, <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, uh, thank you, John. Thank you, uh, tech team. Lyric Fine has been a main driver between behind creating a legal and global infrastructure for all platforms. <clears throat> well, we already, I already read this one, so I'll go to the next one. Anti-piracy, NMPA. This is David Israelite, the president and CEO of NMPA's quote. We've been instrumental. We even actually sued Rap Genius in the beginning. Actually, the NM NMPA sued them to get lyrics legalized. So sorry, everybody, about that technical glitch. What we can do for you, earn lyric revenue and increase ancillary revenue. Collect revenue generated from every lyric display. Let your lyrics drive more frequent, longer listens, and increase revenue in all music income streams. We also give two credits on every uh, search. Display credits with lyrics to ensure your writers and publishing companies are credited for each song. Exposure in over 200 territories. We power clients who operate worldwide and can display your lyrics in over 200 territories. Uh, we do high quality lyrics, no user generated content. The lyrics we license are never user generated. We have an in-house content team where we use exactly what publishers and writers provide us with. We can do more. We can work with your lyrics. You retain full control of your lyrics and you can lock, edit, or block them at any time. And we have no rights on the lyrics. You have all the rights on the lyrics. You retain 100% of your rights. We do detailed royalty reports, quarterly reports that break down earn revenue each quarter, how much and where, song by song, territory by territory. Legal lyric translations. So maximize your online music presence and revenue by allowing anyone to understand your songs, no matter what language they speak. This has been my mission for 17 years. As anybody who knows me, I think uh, Bill Bregan did a little funny gif on one of my mails recently, because he knows me for this time, monetizing lyric, giving music subtitles. So what we're gonna do soon is doubly vetted professional lyric translations for exhibition and monetization across partner platforms, which includes you, the presenters as well as the artists and all the platforms. We also have Lyric Merch, which I'll show a little bit later. Earn additional revenue by selling on-demand custom Lyric merchandising on lyricmerch.com. Lyric Merch is another way for you to generate real physical, remember physical, income. Ah, high quality custom design products available to order. Fans can choose a line from a song or the entire lyrics and add it to a product. Artists have the opportunity to engage with their fans and inspire them through the creation of their own designs. Um, a significant percentage of revenue goes directly to publishers and writers as well as to affiliates who could be a label, publisher, manager, presenter, venue, platform, or artist to attract the artists. Promote your products with a link on your website, artist page, fan messages by email or social media. So you get a percentage of your revenue as a publisher and writer and also as an affiliate. So you actually make double the money if you're actually selling it to your fans. So our graphic designers work with artists and their managers to provide design options and ensure they are cohesive with the artist's image campaign. Artists can use Lyric Merch as an experimental platform for promoting new Lyric merchandising. What I like about it is that the fans can also, from our entire database of licensed Lyric Merch, licensed lyrics for Lyric Merch, the fans can actually design their own uh, t-shirt with your 
their favorite words from your songs. So you can see fans walking around with your words and with a unique t-shirt, like I'll show you later, I wore yesterday, if anybody was watching yesterday. One of my favorite quotes. So these are some of our designs for songs which are well known. Um, these are the different languages we provided. Lyric Fund is based in Toronto, Canada. Um, we have a very multilingual and multi, very diverse, multicultural uh, group of content team people. We maintain a staff of dedicated professionals that create, maintain, and translate content in English, French, Spanish, German, Italian, Portuguese, Japanese, based in Toronto, Korean also. In Montreal, we have a French-Canadian team. In Morocco, we have a team that does Arabic, Turkish, and in India, Hindi, Marathi, in Vietnam, Bahasa, Cantonese, Malay, Mandarin, Thai, Tagalog, Vietnamese. And in South Africa, um, so far, eight South African and Nigerian languages. Um, uh, or languages from the different indigenous people of those regions. This team generates and synchronizes lyrics to audio as well as compiling the associated metadata. So basically that means when your music is playing, the words are also uh, showing. So <clears throat> I'm going to take a brief respite for my voice for a second and do another little surprise. So I hope I do this one better than the last one. So I'm still sharing the screen, I believe. Um, please tell me if it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> I will minimize this window. Nope, that didn't work. Hmm. So I just maximized it. Uh, I will minimize this window and go to that window and maximize that and. Please tell me, technical team, by text, if this is not working. Hi, my name is Nancy, and I work in Very Fine for music publishing. And uh, I've been working for Very Fine about five years, for about five years now. It's been a great experience so far. I'm truly, truly blessed to be working for them. Um, and when it comes to lyrics, um, I think if for everyone we can relate to different experiences and different topics. In particular, myself, I really, really, um, I'm a fan of of the of the topic of the subject, love, of course. And uh, be it love in your family life, be it love with your friends, be it love. In spiritual life and being love for your special someone as well um, and uh, sometimes I find myself singing songs like for example Besame, Besame mucho, como si fuera esta noche la última Okay, so it looks like it's still sharing. Thank you, Nancy. Wanted to get our whole publishing team in there. Now we'll make this one big again and go on to translations. I would have liked the translations of Besame Mucho, which I looked up yesterday, by the way, on the um, on the Eiffel Tower right there. So I hope this is working now. It said stop sharing, so I hope this is working. Uh, John or Lena, email me or text me if it's not, but let's keep going. 
translations. So as YouTube's closed captioning, aka automatic lyric, Google translations have proven understanding the meaning of songs and languages one doesn't speak is an essential to the full enjoyment and memory of the song. Spanish language songs have more than doubled in global revenue and engagement since YouTube added closed captioning, more than doubled. Between now, uh, and I wanna say that again, Spanish language songs have more than doubled in global revenue and engagement since YouTube added closed captions. Reason for that is that Spanish is the most um, easily and best translated song for Google Translate for automatic translations. It's translatable to Portuguese, English, et cetera. And there's also, of course, a lot of native Spanish speakers in America and in other countries around the world. But Ashkenaz or Yiddish or any other languages from South Africa or wherever, those, as you know, those lyric translations on Google will be not so good. So between now and early 2021, other major platforms, other major platforms, streaming platforms will be using human lyric translations show the meaning of songs in many languages. This will fundamentally change the way we experience music. Fundamentally change the way we experience music as subtitles have done for foreign films and surtitles for opera or dubbing is done for TV. Music is meant to be understood by all. As language is not universal, lyrics need translations. Instrumental music is universal, but music with lyrics is not universal. These translations can help skyrocket revenues and engagement as seen with K-pop or Bollywood, Hollywood, and Nollywood. For artists, managers, venues, festivals, programmers, platforms. Now for all your presenters who are still with us through the technical difficulties, I really hope some of you guys are here. But what we did this summer with the, and actually last year as well at Indie Week in Canada, with Lyric Translations Live is to me the future of, of, of it. And it's also the past and the present because people are doing it now. Even people that have no idea about lyric fine or lyric translations or whatever, major artists are doing it. Pete Seeger did it when I saw him as a kid. Agatan Khan does it on his Silk Road touring. Other artists, you too used to do it in Spanish speaking territories. But it's very simple if there's a screen, all it costs is a little bit of time and a little bit of energy and somebody at the helm. So pictures are worth a thousand words. And when I showed these pictures, or pictures of probably this first one, uh, the, the, the lower one, the group swing uh, at uh, Quebec, uh, Quebecois group from Ottawa, actually, um, uh, in 2018, to programmers like Paula Abreu at uh, Summer Stage, she said, yeah, let's do that this summer, you know? Um, and that was also the CEC grant. But so pictures are worth a thousand words. Look at these pictures here. And this is what your festival could be doing. Every festival, every artist could be doing this with Aaron's music, Jaffa's music, or any of the other wonderful, powerful lyrics you sing in whatever lyrics you sing them in when you're in a different language culture. It's respectful for the other language culture to actually get an idea of what it is you're singing. So <clears throat> pictures are worth a thousand words. And here hundreds or billions of fans can understand foreign language songs foreign language songs, us and them, illusion of separation, stories, politics, culture, jokes, spirituality, community, universally, as can our hearing disabled and challenged friends with lyrics shown live and online. This is the soon coming reality for music and is welcome from all who experience it, especially writers, artists, and their audience, finally able to consciously communicate intention and meaning, words, Cross language divisions. Uh, I'll go back to that. That was Lita Pimienta at Summer Stage, Digging Roots at FIMPRO Guadalajara, part of a SEMA trade mission, also part of our indigenous work, the group Swing at Indie Week. This guy didn't want to do it. Michelle ben Benek said, No, 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 man, if I sing in uh, French all the time, nobody cares. Who cares? Afterwards, he was the biggest proponent. He loved it. When they said bouge, bouge, everybody jumped, you know, whereas they might not jump in Toronto if they don't know what bouge means. He loved it. And uh, Sate uh, in Coma Fest in Brasilia also. And Trampa from Brasilia loved it at the, at the um, Indie Week of 2018, the first time we did it. Everybody was talking about their lyrics, which are phenomenal, powerful, rage against the machine kind of lyrics. This is what it would look like on platforms. Um, in the very near future. 
17 years of my work, by the way. So again, and everybody else's work. So, you know, things take time. Uh, how it works, publishers, self-published writers, aggregators, PROs, societies. This is a data chart, which is really hard to talk over, but many publishers basically send us the rights and the data, license us the rights, pay them for it. We send the lyrics to all the platforms, Amazon Music, Deezer, Google. They display and use the lyrics for the fans. The fans get the lyrics for free. Nobody's paying for these lyrics, but they're paying with their attention, which is what digital is all about. The consumers then, um, we count the clicks. All these services count the clicks, uh, like streaming. These companies pay us royalties. We uh, split the royalties with the publishers and songwriters and pay for all these costs of delivery, accounting, et cetera, else. And then the publishers pay the writers. Um, uh, same thing with aggregators. It could be a distributor who's aggregated lyric rights, or it could be um, a PRO, or it could be a publisher's organization. We work with different kinds of aggregators to aggregate lyric rights and then license them to us. But it's the same exact thing. So our core strengths, um, okay, it's working, good. Every year, Lyric Find pays millions of dollars to publishers and songwriters. That's the thing that I'm the happiest about with my work, really, is that we're paying the writers, we're helping the writers, and we're helping the fans, because the fans get to know the songs, they get to know the lyrics. Accurate, timely, quarterly reporting, transparency, and clear rights management. Experienced global publishing team, I showed you three of them, one's coming up. Uh, and it's, there's people all around the world. We have Florian in Germany, Luciana in Brazil, Sebastian in, in Japan, Barris in Turkey, uh, Manal in Lebanon, and probably some others I might have forgotten. No, I think that's it. Oh, yeah, Bernie and June in Korea. Sorry, Bernie. Quickly and efficiently licensing rights around the world while understanding and accommodating local laws and customs. More than decade-long relationships with publishers. Now what? Take advantage of our services. Please, please, please take advantage of our services. All you writers out there, uh, platforms out there, festivals out there, small clubs out there with a screen, take advantage of our services. While Lyric Find ensures a database of industry-wide top quality lyrics and song data accuracy, we also maintain extensive coverage, meaning that your lyrics might already be in our platform partner systems. If they are, by simply licensing them, you would instantly start earning revenue, potentially including past royalties escrowed by clients. People do some things in a gray manner, and but if they escrow the money, which most of them do, we can actually pay for past usage sometimes, practically three years back. We can account for your songs, for your lyrics on a world by world, world by worldwide territory, ter by, territory by territory, or song by song. Okay, <clears throat> what we need to get started. Now, I'm gonna, uh, no, I think I, I'll do this first and then I'll show our, our director of publishing in the Toronto office uh, who will kind of talk through this, but we can't do it at the same time. So getting started, what we need to get started, rights, we need a license from you uh, or an aggregator partner like HFA is an aggregator partner in the US. We need the claim ownership information, which is basically who wrote the song, first and last, last names, who's publishing the song, the title, the artist, any codes, same kind of metadata you send to your distributors. And, and we need the lyrics, um, generally speaking. You can upload this data to our dashboard in any number of formats, including CWR, Excel, CSV, JSON, or even manually song by song. And we provide you with guidelines to simplify the process. It's not that difficult. We also have a development team that can assist you in generating and formatting the data to easily integrate into our system. These are some of our aggregator partners for Africa. Our aggregator partner is Capasso, the South African PRO, HFA in America, Apple Amcos in Australia and New Zealand, CSDEM, which is the Conseil Syndicate Editors of Music in France, and UBC, which is the biggest PRO in Brazil, and we're adding more aggregators all the time. Uh, we're also getting aggregation rights from distributors like CD Baby, who has a pro through SongTrust, or other digital distributors. Um, so submitting your lyrics and claim ownership, these are the different formats, the ways we can do it, CWR, which is used by publishers, Common Works Registration, JSON, which is a standard programming language, for writing lyrics and song data, um, gestion automatically, Excel, CSV spreadsheets, at the time, uh, uh, manually versus via Lyric Find database, emailing the Word document to us. So visit us here, and I'm gonna, um, 
shrink this up, take another second and get uh, Nick up on the screen. Here we go, hopefully this will work. I think I'm still scaring, scaring the screen. Hi, my name is Nick McLeod. I've been at Fine for almost 13 years. I started on the content team, editing and transcribing lyrics. I managed the content team for a few years, and now I'm the director of publishing. I just want to talk to you all about getting started with Lyric Fine, what we'll need, and how to go about submitting that information. Now, to get started, we'll need your rights, your claim slash ownership information, and your lyrics. Rights can be licensed to us directly or through one of our partners. Claim slash ownership information, that, require, that lets us know what's exactly represented by you. Without that information, we don't know which lyrics are yours, so we don't know which ones to pay out to you for and which ones we can display. Lyrics, we have a content team that does manage, does oversee the top charting songs for the last 15 years, so they've been submitting those. But for anything longer tail or for anything that hasn't charted, we won't have the lyrics for it, so you'll need to submit those. So let me talk to you about actually submitting this information. So submitting your lyrics and claim info, and claim info can be done in several ways. CWR, standardized format, that can only include your ownership information, no lyrics. JSON, which is a standard programming language, that can include the most information. We recommend this whenever possible. This allows for greater matching and for one bulk submission that you can do on your own. Excel slash CSV spreadsheets can also be submitted. Those are accessed via Microsoft Office or Google Sheet software. Um, if you have a dashboard account with us, you can submit manually directly through your account. And if you're registered through one of our aggregators, you can email the Word document directly to our content team to be ingested. If you have any specific questions about this process or any of the file formats, you can always visit us at lyricfind.com. There's contact information there. You can reach out to publisher at lyricfind.com, but there's also a lot, a lot of information already on the site, so I'd give it a good read. Now, submitting your lyrics. There's a few things you want to look out for. When formatting your lyrics, a few common mistakes that we usually find is that you want to use the language the lyrics are sung in. If it's a Spanish song, write the lyrics in Spanish. Don't include any other information in the lyrics. You don't need to know the artist's name or song title within the lyrics, the album release date. Just put the lyrics. All other information will be supplied by the digital service provider. When translating, when submitting translations, you want to translate the lyrics, the context, and the meaning whenever possible, to not do literal translations. This will help convey the meaning um, for whoever's reading it. Now let me pass it back to Robert to continue the presentation. Hi, my name is Dave well, Cloud. Well. Lyric <sighs> Sorry about that, guys. I got to learn to DJ. Hope we're back on here. I think we should be. All right. So lyric formats, formatting. Nick kind of explained this, and thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nancy Delora, again. Common mistakes to avoid, which will increase readability and give your fans the best experience. Use the language the lyrics are sung in. I guess somebody would be sending me stuff if it's not working. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Uh, use the language the lyrics are sung in, so for Aaron, Hebrew, and the applicable characters. No other uh, information outside of the lyrics uh, should be included, such as artist blah, blah, blah. Lit Nick said all this stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, don't write verse, chorus, fade. Just put the lyrics out as sung, all of them. Okay. Um, when translating lyrics, translate the context and meaning. When possible, do not translate literally. Lyric find tools for translation are soon available, which will be exciting. Don't forget, you see, lyrics make you more money in all royalties and help break songs in the positive meaning of that word, break. Maximizing engagement and listening time with your song, increasing plays, increasing plays, and driving multiple and longer plays, for which, when the lyrics are exhibited, you get paid double on streaming services paid and quadruple on unpaid streaming, on free streaming services ad supported. 
increasing your music's discoverability on our web with our 70 plus partners, getting your songs on the lyric fine billboard charts and other international lyric charts. And of course that helps with radio sync, plugging, it helps with everything. And the lyric charts are different than the sales charts. You will be amazed. People want to know songs that they might not, you know, want to listen to on the pop world. So I would say us world music fans would be much improved by getting our lyrics up there in the original language and also with translations. Taking advantage of our on-demand custom lyric merchandising service. I'll remember to show that again when I come back find it um, to drive fan engagement and product revenue this is where you can actually really make significant money sell 100 shirts you're making money and all you got to do is send out the link and people will be designing them themselves also which is really cool um, for fans this change will do you good as the music industry continues to evolve rights holders and creators can find new opportunities for growth which I encourage everybody to do in this stay at home period by accessing alternative revenue streams, not only lyrics and lyric find, but there's so many other alternative revenue streams. Ensuring you are maximizing the exposure, exhibition, and monetization of your lyrics is a great place to start, and lyric find can help. And remember, most of the artists in the world are not actually generating income on the road. They're usually paying for it in one way or another. It's expensive to tour. So, you know, unless you are at a certain level, um, you know, even not touring is, could be a good thing if you're generating other ways. So I'm going to close this for now. This is my, uh, uh, contact and Laura's Nick's and Nancy's first name at lyricfind.com. Nick is without the C and, uh, thank you very much for sticking with this presentation. I'm so sorry. I missed the pretty part of it and you only heard my voice in the beginning. Um, now I'm going to stop sharing this and you can, uh, Come back and uh, see me here um, for a minute. So yeah, before I forget, I want to show my uh, pretty much my favorite T-shirt, <laughs> which I was wearing yesterday. Uh, where is this? It's hard to see where the where is on this thing. Okay, where we go. You were only waiting for this moment to be free. Blackbird. It says Blackbird on there. It's hard to see in this light. Blackbird, um, which. You know, I know Nick Doritas, if he was on here, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. He was on the, the Palatable panel before, which was actually great. I really appreciated it. I was in his small group afterwards in the breakout sessions. And he said, ah, Beatles, Rolling Stones, you know, I don't want to listen to that and stuff, but I'm 66. So, you know, for me, that was growing up music. And the funny thing about that story, not so funny, telling really, is that I didn't even know this, but that song was written about the integration movement. I spoke of John Lewis earlier. You know, I um, I was involved when I was a kid, you know, uh, my whole life pretty much. Um, and, um, you know, Freedom Riders, uh, your skull cracked for what you believe in. Um, so but that's what Paul McCartney wrote that song about, which I never knew until I actually, you know, chose those lyrics and bought that shirt and designed it myself, you know, <laughs> orange on a V-neck you know, in like five minutes when I was somewhere or in the world at a conference because I wanted to buy it. Um, so, so that was, that was pretty cool. Um, and, and then of course you might know if you live in Canada, there was a young woman in the, I believe it's Cree language. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, it's Cree, uh, one of the Cree languages up near where I was on a board of Mercado, Sydney, Canada. And I've been within five miles of where this young woman lived in a boat actually, and I learned a little bit about that uh, place, that reservation, uh, whatever, the home. And this young 16 year old woman sang that in her language and it became a big CBC viral thing. She was even brought up on stage by Paul McCartney. I actually know the publisher of Paul McCartney's music and I asked her about it and she said yes, yeah, as soon as Paul heard it, he loved it. Um, so anyway, that song, when I wear that shirt, I feel like somehow, you know, it's, uh, it's an important song for me. So there are some questions. Um, I've been talking a lot here, and let me just uh, read the questions. I think I have another uh, 10 minutes or so left. Let me see what are the questions. Um, all right, sorry everybody for messing that up. But So how do I integrate this service into my releases? So maybe that sounds like it comes either from an artist or a label. You know, contact us. It's not that difficult. Um, 
When you say into your releases, it sounds like it might even be uh, a question from a platform. Um, if it is, or a website, you know, artists have their own websites. They could, um, you know, put their lyrics up on their own websites themselves. But, uh, but um, it's not a difficult process. Uh, the main thing is that you need to license the lyrics to us first through an aggregator or directly if you're a big enough publisher. And big enough just means you have a bunch of songs. Uh, we can't license directly with every one-off song because it's uh, not cost effective at all and we do need to um, pay our people. Um, but you can go through an aggregator and do it. Um, again, sometimes the distributors are aggregators like uh, CD Baby with Song Trust. Um, question, do you submit foreign lyrics and original characters or Roman characters or both? Maybe that's coming from Aaron, I don't know. Um, original characters, I think we said that on the, um, on the um, the uh, presentation, um, original characters. Um, sometimes we ask for romanized versions of the metadata so that we can make sure that uh, it's accurate and matches with um, different, different platforms who may have it written in a romanized format. Um, but yeah, we show the lyrics in the original characters. But remember that you know, my personal mission and Lyric Vine's business and mission soon as well will be also showing with the lyric translations for meaning. I can't see your chat, so I'm going to ask the host if people are still with us and are still asking questions. Are there any more questions? Um, I think I've only seen these two so far. I'm happy to answer any questions. And again, I really apologize for uh, disappearing the um, presentation, but at least you heard my voice. That was bad for the um, hearing challenged people. I tried to do it uh, so that uh, it would work for everybody, but anyway. Um, so any other questions out there? Well, um, I have a few more minutes, so let me just improvise a little bit. Um, as a human being, as a music fan, we grew up listening to lyrics. I thank my parents uh, for their album collection um, that enabled me to hear music from all around the world, hear blues, hear instrumental music as well. Um, and um, you know, in our kind of own way we sang songs at holidays and things and sometimes the songs had translations. Uh, some of the most powerful songs in my own personal life are translations of songs in languages that I don't understand. Uh, I think that's the case in everybody's life if they've actually done the research on these songs that they don't understand when people are singing them. So um, when Rammstein, a big pop group from Germany, uh, plays in America, almost everybody is singing the lyrics in German because they actually know the lyrics because the Rammstein lyrics, I don't know what they are, but the Rammstein fans know what they are and they're powerful. This young teeny bopper kind of band who had a huge, German band who had a huge following in France called Tokyo Hotel. That one band increased German language learning, education by 700% in France, 700%, seven times as many people wanted to learn German because they loved that band. Um, really, that's what the Beatles did, you know? Um, that's what rock and roll did. Um, there were licensing problems for rock and roll. It's hard to license songs. How much of my song, my baby, am I gonna give you for translating my baby in your song? It's a difficult negotiation and it's song by song. So after many years of paying the publishers and generating a new market in lyrics, we were able to get the publishers to agree to monetize lyric translations. Why? Because it was happening on the web all the time, for free, not authorized, not necessarily accurate, uh, and not uh, getting paid, not being monetized. So because, why? Because of demand, because people want to know from countries around the world what those words on my t-shirt meant or what your words mean. 
your words are valuable. And when you're singing them to a small audience who speak that language, or even a bigger audience that speak that language, but not to the seven billion other people out there in the world who don't speak the language, you know, unless it's in Mandarin um, or English. I was on a conference once and I asked the head of the World Tourism Commission about lyrics. We were in Jamaica actually, where obviously music is a big tourism drawing. Um, you know, every tourism is about reggae and Bob Marley. And, you know, there's a lot of cultural tourism in Jamaica and a lot of cultural tourism even now in Gangnam in Korea. So we talked about language and he said to everybody, he asked the question, so what's the biggest language in the world? You know, I said Mandarin, you know, he said, no, it's bad English. Now that's the de facto export music language. I've worked with uh, uh, France, Europe, Brazil as an export music officer. I've worked with Canada a lot with trade missions all around the world. Uh, I've managed artists who sing in different languages, the Gypsy Kings, Fela sang in English, but it was hard to understand what he sang, King Sunny a Day, etc. cetera. Um, uh, but so bad English, English is the de facto export music language, but I don't want you to sing in bad English. I want you to sing in your languages, but I, I do want to be able to understand it. So. For fans like me around the world, and I think every fan wants to understand it, that's why lyrics are the number one search term, um, and they just cut and paste and put it in a Google Translate and get a bad translation like YouTube is doing. Um, still way better than nothing, and I really thank YouTube, and they did it because of my work, they told me, so that's very nice of them. But we're gonna do it better because we're doing human lyric translations, which are much better. You know, you're not gonna translate Hebrew or um, ancient Hebrew lyrics or lyrics from different cultures around the world uh, into English or Spanish or Mandarin very easily with an automatic translation system. So we're doing the work and everybody here, all your audiences around the world can also help us in that work, uh, which I really do want to have happen. And the presenters among us and the artists among us can put it on the rider whenever there's, um, <laughs> whenever there's a, um, a screen in a venue, um, or if you're big enough, you can make sh bring your own screen or make sure they have a screen. So if you're singing your language in a different language culture, they can understand the words because the words, whether it's for a wedding is Siberian jazz project, which was great and, uh, or whatever it's for those words have meaning. Um, and, uh, the meaning is what the songwriters wrote the song about. So this is for you, the artists, and for us, the fans, uh, and for everybody in between. Um, so presenters have a role, artists have a role, fans have a role, fans demand it. That's why it's the number one search. Uh, and you generate money on it. And you know, um, maybe not a lot of money if you don't have a lot of streams, but if you do the lyric uh, merch, you can actually send it to your fans and uh, sell that and people will appreciate that if they appreciate your songs, uh, which I believe they do, you know, or else we wouldn't all be here. So I want to take the last few minutes to thank my colleagues at Lyric Fine, to thank Small World Music and Global Toronto, thank Mondo for the panel yesterday, John, Sergio, uh, Alan Davis, Mayor, everybody, um, Shan Lee, Matt, uh, our stage managers, everybody, but really most importantly, thank everybody who made this a freaking amazing event, you know, where we challenged each other, we learned new things with our beginner mind, we listened to people like Allison talk about the white superiority in the cultural context of granting of Canada, the government mistakes that are made here, in, um, you know, and where I live and where you live, and Poland and Brazil and you know, nationalistic countries around the world. Um, uh, and, you know, we, we all need to just uh, listen to music, be inspired, be busy when we're at home, be present everywhere when we're at home, be ubiquitous in our, in our contributions to the world. Sorry for me preaching to the converted. I know you all are doing that, but I really want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for doing the work that this community does because it's really valuable work. So thank you. I'm going to give a couple extra mi minutes to uh, chill everybody and I'm going to chill and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Take this out, take this inspiration out and um, set, challenge the status quo.
make good trouble, do your thing, and uh, do it well, and communicate it to everybody because uh, they deserve it, and we deserve it. I'm going to leave now. Bye.